So, guys, a little bit of background. Cobble Lodge, you know, we, again, I, I said this in one of my earlier um, presentations that I did. We are one of the oldest councils in the state, but one of the newest lodges because our, our council did not want to get rid of the Order of the Pawnee. So our lodge did not form until 1951. So us and Eswa are the babies of the lodges of the state. So with that, we will start, and we're going to start off with our J1. This back patch was designed by Don Blackman at the time was the section chief and our lodge chief. His mother actually drew this. And what Don was going to do with it to begin with is was going to be a transfer on his breech cloth. But the lodge loved the design so much that they um, decided that they would go ahead and produce a whole whopping 30 patches for these. And then if you look on the right, that is one of the original dance team jacket coats, the green coats like we still wear green the hunter green stuff today you were awarded one if you met certain criteria there was a point system um, nobody's been able to find the original point system all i know is the gentleman who gave me the green coat said it was mighty hard to obtain one of these and in the good market before everything went crazy this was about a 3500 hundred dollar jacket pack um, and again, only 30 of them made. They are very, very hard to come by. And for you guys keeping up with our lodge, I have not done patch vault yet, guys, because I simply do not have time to sit down and do all that scanning that they want done. And they will not take our book. At the end of the presentation, there is a place where you can go to our lodge website, our tire patch collection, and all of our memorabilia on everything our lodge has ever produced from pencil the car tags, everything we have ever done is on that website. And the CL means that's our Catawba Lodge number and BB means blue book. So if you're going by blue book, which a lot of people do, you've got both the identification numbers there. And yes, there has now been a fake of our dance team jacket patch. It's about a three inch patch. It's the most ugliest thing I ever seen, but there is one out there. I have one in the display case out at belt. Uh, this showed up I guess it's been about a year ago and that his code name on eBay is Army Cats or something like that. It's got all the fakes of everybody's patches out there. That's where this came from. So there is a fake of it. And it's real easy to tell the difference between the two. So our next issue is going to be the dance team. This one I actually had done uh, when I was the dance team advisor because we simply guys did not have the money. In the 80s, our lodge was absolutely broke. All the adult are the ones who gave us money to buy patches for conclaves and everything else. And then, you know, they got paid back after the event. So I wanted to have a patch. So this is actually came from the J6 and I took it to a local embroiderer and she put dance team on 25 of them for me. They were awarded to the boys. They were sewn on red silk team jackets uh, that they got after they performed um, 15 dances. Uh, they had to dance at um, two conclaves, or if they could attend a NOAC, we would take one NOAC and one conclave. So they were really hard to come by. And me and Jack Jolly actually bought the jackets and gave the boys the jackets and the jacket patches once they made the criteria, because again, the lodge didn't have the money. The next issue was the J10. And this was our new design that we did. You see the nest, it, it changed a little bit in the way it looked and the colors of it. And um, we we had these made, 25 of them, when we did the, the J9s that look just like this, except these have dance teams. And the same criteria was that you um, had to do the same amount of dancing and participation to earn one of these, and they came sewn on a red silk jacket. So there are very few of these that you find that have not been sewn on the jackets, okay? Uh, only 25 of them produced, very hard to find. And again, both of these patches, back in the good old days, back a couple of years ago, these were both, you know, Twelve to fifteen hundred dollar jacket patches, and now they're you know between three and five hundred bucks. If you can find one, they're still very hard to find. The next thing is the dance team handkerchief, guys. There were only sixty of these produced, and I guess I was lucky enough that I was a youth when these were produced, and we had to dance 
or play the drum or be part of the team, uh, the dance team or the drum team, you had to dance 15 individual dances or team dances. You had to perform at three Dixies or NOAC in order to be awarded one of these. And guys, they have all disappeared. Mine and Mr. Jolly's, and Mr. Jolly's son now has his, and mine's in the display out at Bell, are the only two that I have seen. 30 years. So if you ever run across one of these, definitely, definitely pick it up because it was only one per participant. You could not buy any. So very hard handkerchief to earn and ones to find out there in the world. Next, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about our fire wrap. How many of you guys have been on ceremony teams and part of your job also, other than being a ceremonialist, was to go, you had to get the fires done, put smudge pots out, make the torches, all that good stuff. Well, that's what I used to do when I was on the ceremony team as a young man, is we had to do all that plus get ready to do the ceremonies. So about 20 years ago, we had a gentleman named Don Daner who came up with this program called the Fire Rat. And what these guys do is they do all of that before work and the ceremony teams does not have to. They build the fire. They put out the smudge pots. They build the torches. They take care of putting the candles and the sashes out on the on the candelabras or however you put your sashes out for your ceremony. Uh, they are sure that all the elements for each of the ceremonies are there. They set up for the pre-ordeal. There's also now we have enough our vigil honor members. They help us set our vigil trail up on um, on our Friday night vigils in the fall. And this is the criteria that you have to meet, and you are eligible to buy one patch every time you earn these. And the Fire Rat t-shirts you can get as soon as you join the team. So anyway, there has been several different issues of the Fire Rat Patch. There's only been 50 of each one produced. So very hard to come across. Uh, most of the guys, the first one they get is sewn on their jacket. And if you look up there in the middle, you'll see two of our Fire Rats wear their vest. And, you know, it's your vest to do what you want to. Most guys put their, their Ordeal Brotherhood or Vigil flaps on their pockets. I put a chapter hat pin on there or something. But for the most part, they're all pretty much uniformed okay and um, they put the fire rat patch on the back of the vest again the vest is it has to be bought by the individual fire rat and then when you earn the patch you have to buy the patch and then the, most of the guys sew the patch onto that vest and then most guys because it is so hard usually only earn one more patch before they most of them age out and going off to college so these are running between three and four hundred dollars a piece the first one the j17 is it's probably the hardest to find now. That's the original fire rat. And they're hard to tell apart, guys. You have to look at each one to, to look at. If you look at the third one, what we did is we added a smudge pot to it. On the 100th anniversary one, we put the red sash and the 100 in the top of the bonnet. Uh, so there's very little difference in them. So you have to look at them close. Our next thing is our flute team. Uh, we had a flute team for a while. It sort of got disbanded. We are hoping that this is going to come back very soon. The flute team advisor did these small pocket patches, a regular one and a ghost one. These were sold at our events to raise money to help buy flutes for the guys to play. Now, we still have flute players in the lodge. We just do not have a team right now. And they play at the Indian Village, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And they play at our different ceremony. Uh, the jacket patch was the same thing. There was some criteria. I tried to get it, but I couldn't get a hold of the gentleman that had had it he would not return my phone call um, but there was quite extensive of what you had to do in order to earn the big jacket patch and you see the Indian name on the top that translated in Catawba Indian means red-headed woodpecker which you see the woodpecker that's, that's that's landing on the flute there so that's what that means so these are another, the rest of the series of the small pocket patches. Uh, again, they were done as fundraisers. Uh, anybody could buy them. Um, they were typically available at the Fall Fellowship for sale. And um, again, they went to help support the flute team in order to buy flutes. And also they bought, um, Joel Ferran would also buy supplies every year for the Indian Village. And we'll get to that in a minute, to where he let anybody come into the flute building area and make a flute out 
out of PVC and you got to take that flute home with you at no cost. So it's pretty cool. The next thing we did for you guys who are old enough, who remembers the great rain clave of 91 when Croatan, when we thought the whole camp was going to flood away. Well, they sent us home early because of the floods. I mean, guys, it was horrible. It was just, it was bad. I've never seen it rain so hard in all my life. So everybody was sort of upset that they didn't get a chance to compete. So our lodge took it upon ourselves, and we came up with the Catawba Invitational that ran for 10 years, and we did it every fall out at our camp, and all the North Carolina lodges were invited to come and participate at this, it was Ceremony and Dance Invitational, and it was really, really cool. And as you see, we alternated each year between a dancer or a ceremonialist into our patches, and it went about 10 years, and then we got got switched to move sections back to the Dixie. And so we did away with it, but it was pretty well attended for about 10 years as we hosted it. So that's what this was. Some other things here that I'll talk to you guys about the first patch on the left, we did a brand new ring that we sold. I know you guys out there to click North Carolina. Uh, some of you guys bought our lighthouse patches. Well, that was done as a fundraiser to build our new ceremony ring. And this was the dedication patch. Sorry, you guys didn't get a chance to get Get down there at Dixie, but with all the rain we had when we hosted last time, did not get the opportunity to get down there. So <clears throat> the next white arrowhead is an arrowhead that um, ever our guys who serve as a Langamats can earn um, by serving as a Langamat for the weekend and doing their duties. The next one is the Neomat patch, and that is awarded one per person. And both of these patches, guys, it don't matter how many times you do it, you only get one of the patches. The black Neomat one is given to um, young men and ladies who help guide our guys through the brotherhood process on any given weekend. The top one and the bottom one are simply our vigil guide patches. If you serve as a vigil guide and you perform and do all of your duties as a guide, um, you receive one of these during the, the public recognition on Saturday morning during our um, fall fellowship. When your candidate receives his vigil, you receive your patch. Now, talk to you a little bit about our Indian village. Guys, we have an Indian village that we put on every fall fellowship that is out of this world. Each chapter has a fully operational TP, and this is a full working Indian village where we do tanning, beading, leather work, clothes making. We make chokers. We make flutes. They've dug out a canoe that they're still working on. Blow darting. We do tomahawk throwing. Uh, there's all types of different Indian games that they do out there on Saturday. It is a big deal. And then we had Friday night, all the TPs are all lit up. It is, it is gorgeous. And we do our vigil call outs there by the TP. And there is a patch, of course there is, for the guys who work the Indian Village, as you see there, there are certain criteria, well, they have to attend so many uh, meetings and have to be at so many events in order to earn the Indian Village pocket patch, the odd shape there. Uh, just some more pictures of inside the Indian Village, some more Indian Village. Now, here is a picture of our ceremony ring at Belt. So, as you see, those totem poles around there are from the um, 2004 Dixie. We are getting ready to put up the 2015 Dixie. We are in the current position right now of trying to raise money to do a new ring. It's not really a ring as much as it's going to be like a meditation garden up at Camp Grimes called Catawba Point, where we're going to incorporate the 20. 15 total and so we are selling some patches in order to raise the money to help fund that so dance team guys we've always had a very very good dance team over our whole beginning of time now like everybody else we've had down times and up times you know we've had boys on the stage at NOAC in the top 10 and the first year they did chicken dance at NOAC we had the number two chicken dancer in the nation we've had some pretty good dance teams over the year Joe Springs Joe Joe used to do the fire hoop dance uh, where they actually lit the hoops on fire. And guys, he was absolutely amazing doing that hoop dance. Uh, and um, great dancers. Danced at NOAC a couple of times. Never won for some reason, but but he danced at NOAC, was on the stage three NOACs in a row. Just some more dance team pictures of our guys, all kinds of traditional fancy grass, straight. So, but anyway, that's my 10 minutes, guys.
Um, and again, if you go to um, our website, um, you can pull up our, if you go there and hit the toolbar and go down to history and then hit history, and then it'll open up the page that shows the patch collection and you can click on that. And there's some more informational stuff at the beginning, the order of the Pawnee stuff's on there. Um, the quest for the golden arrow information is on there. So it, it's, it's some pretty good stuff, guys. So there with that, that's all I got. Thank you, fellas. <laughs>